G'day, how you going? I'm Ian Harris, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my YouTube channel where I like to teach beginners and sometimes advanced beginners how to paint in acrylic and they are my free gifts to you. Before I get started, I want to say a big thank you to Ali Prefontaine. She sent me a cup, a cool collar, quite a few little trinkets, a bottle opener and a sheriff's office badge that's on my shed at the moment, uh, all the way from Arizona. So Ali Prefontaine, thank you very much for your gift you sent me in the mail, much appreciated. Now I'll give you the size of my canvas there and I'll also get some colors running up the screen that I'm gonna use. Now I've got a bit of a different size canvas here. I've got a panoramic layout because this painting, I wanna do panoramic, but because of my filming setup, I can't do something this big so i've cut it down to size and i've got it stapled and taped to me cork board there so i can show you what we're going to do today so get on over here and let's get right into it so once again thank you ali for the cup and other trinkets you sent me so my horizon line's halfway if anything i'd like to go a bit lower than halfway if you're going to do this layout and we're going to have uh, grass and trees there some trees on top of that land and some beautiful reflections in this water and we're going to have some water reeds in the water as well laid out a pacific way to give the painting its own look and we're going to give it these reflections and all this sky is going to be like foggy misty and damp and that type of the year now this sky is not going to have a lot of blending in that but i just want to still prep up the sky area with my craft paint my soft body look how soft it is out of the big bottle and I've got a little bit of retarder there, so I'm just gonna incorporate that into what's on my brush. And to make it simple, so we're not rushing to try and get the top and bottom done, I'm gonna just concentrate on the top sky half first, and then we'll come back down and do the water area. So we'll just get this on there for our sky. Now I wanted a, an overcast, damp, foggy sky scene, so that's what I'm going for in this painting. And I've got that tape there, just so as I don't get anything protruding, so when I paint the water you see lumps and bumps under there. Now we'll stroke this left and right like a pure gentleman, get it nice and even and thin, ready to put our sky colours there. Now down on the palette here, I've got quinacridone magenta. I've got some gray, it's a mid-tone gray. I've got it out of the tube, but if you don't have tubes of gray, you can easily mix up a mid-tone value, that color. And I've got cerulean blue. I'm gonna just grab a flat brush just to mix up my overcast sky color, which is this gray. So I wanna start adding the blue into there. So we get like a silvery gray blue. Now I'm adding the darker color gently to the lighter color. If I try to add the opposite way around, you're gonna end up with a massive pile of paint. There we go, we've got a slight tinge of blue in that. And I do wanna grab some of that magenta, just the littlest bit, and try and get a warm value of some of this over there as well. All right, now, I'll grab this. Because that warm color I want over this half, so I'm gonna use the this and just pushing it on, lifting it up. I'm just pushing it on, look at that. It's gray, it's overcast, it's got that bit of blue in it. There we go, about to there. Now I'm gonna pick up that warmer half that I mixed up and get this over here. It's very subtle, you might not even notice it, but um, it's there. There you go, I've just added a little bit more. Now I'll stroke this left and right all the way across just to get our sky nice and artistically vibing with the canvas there. Okay. I'm just looking at it, I wanted a slight more bluer here. So using that same brush, I'm grabbing some more blue and getting that a bit more blue. Just the cerulean blue I've got here. If you don't know what colors I use and you missed the beginning of the video, go back to the beginning, you'll see the colors going up the screen. I want this kind of, it's all wet, wet on wet at the moment, this. Just something there like that. And I'll just pull it through the sky. Okay. When you pull the tape off, can we watch you do it, Ian? I'm gonna do it right now because that paint's wet. So I wanna pull this tape off 
And what I want to do, so as we do not get a ridge of paint there, I'm just going to get my finger and just soften that ridge of paint. Or you can grab your brush and just simply come across that paint and just soften it down so you got rid of that lip of paint there. That's cool. Now that's had a dry. I'll just show you if you can see where that paint is not lipping along here. It's quite smooth. Hopefully you can see that. So now that it's dry, I want to get this colour a little bit darker just to put this the faintest trees there so it looks like they're behind mist. So in that, I've just sprayed my palette to keep it wet. I'm going to grab a little bit more blue, not too much, and I'll start mixing over here, grabbing some of the warm vibe as well. And there's what's on the sky. So now I've got to slowly adjust it. Getting this colour as well. I want some warmth in it. I'll grab a bit more of that. There we go. It's blue, but it's going to have some warmth in it. So I'm going to use my, oh, a, a brush I use for doing my foliage, which is just my deer foot. And I want something coming up here. Just faint, it's very faint, this tree, but I'm painting it, this is it, this is all it's going to be. Very faint. This is an easy, simple painting to do. Follow this video step by step and you can't go wrong. And practice if you feel you need a bit more practice. We'll get something else out here somewhere. Just coming down there. They're kind of shrubs. I'm not sure those ones that hang around lakes and swamps and type you get in Thailand. Over here, I'm just adding a little bit more blue to that just to get maybe a, just a tad darker because I just want something coming off the painting here. Just like that. There we go. Now I'm just grabbing some of this part of it here because we're going to have foreground stuff here but I still want something just lightly pushed in the background so it's more pale. I'm just going to add a bit more white to that because it's not pale enough there we go just something subtle just to grab some shrubs behind there if the if you didn't have them there and you put your foreground trees there something's going to look missing there we go okay i'm grabbing the craft paint again and I want to just map in the bottom half of the water, bottom half of the painting where the water will be. So we'll just get this pushed all the way along here. We've done the top half now and we're going to divide this when we add the mid-ground, foreground of the, the bushes and whatnot. This just has to come to there because we're going to have a land mass there dividing this line. So that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect and then pull those brush strokes left and right just so as we're going to have the water layout within our brush strokes if that makes sense okay so i'm going to grab me gray again and that's cerulean blue and mix up me water the main color of my water which is the bluey gray again and then just on one side i want it more blue there's our colour there. It's like a silver grey blue colour, cerulean blue and mid-tone grey. And we'll come across the bottom here, all the way across the canvas, wear your brush away, push that into the water, pick up some more paint now. Get it on there. Paint to that line there. Just like that. Don't worry about with that transition where they're joining because like I said, we're going to cover it up with a block of land there. Now I want to add a bit of the magenta to this. Oh, too much. It's not too bad. Just to get some of this vibe going at the bottom. It's just adding this warmth down into the water there. And I want to kind of, let's see, oh yeah. So what I'll do, I can push it like this, or what I can do is get it on my brush and just put it where I want it. 
within the water like this where I want all that warmth and then you can just water fire that and you've got those you can do it like that all right I'm grabbing a bit of phalo blue just mixing with that over here just to get a cooler vibe in the opposite corner which is here let's put it on there just want this vibe here and I'll pull that into the water nice and level and straight now this color we got here I've just got a smaller shrub brush I'm grabbing some more of the cerulean blue let's get that a bit darker I just want something here in front Maybe a little one just here somewhere. A little indication of something else there. I'm trying to create that um, swampy vibe and we can probably get this. Just stamp it on and scratch it. Just into that background there. Now, anything here can just blur down into the water. I'm softly pushing on this brush, very softly. That's just that bit there which is here. And now I want to grab an indication of that. I'm putting it on but pulling it as I put it on so it's got that pull down vibe about it there we go and this is how we do the water at the same time i mean uh, our own way now we don't have to have it wet now this paint here i ran out so i just had to mix up some more and i'm just grabbing my deer foot my my shrub brush the one i want to make me shrubs with because this color that we had up here we want to get this into the water as well put it on and pull it down. That vibe there. And where else are we? We got something here. Just ever so slightly put in front of that. All right, I've got me small deer foot again. Now I've got yellow green here. That's Australian yellow green out of the tube. If you don't have it, you can mix up your own yellow green more on the yellow side. Mix up a green, but more on the yellow side, hence the name yellow green. Now I've put tape here. That's where my landmass is going to start from somewhere here and come all the way along here. And I want to get this where it meets these trees here i want it sort of smoky so i'm going to do this first now maybe this brush let me get my little scrumbly brush that i normally do that with and i'll use that one first just to get that on so i'll start at the bottom and i want to just gently wear it into there just leaving the, that top color there coming down with this because a lot of this is going to be covered up as well fade it because that yellow green that I've got is a little bit see-throughy so I'm just trying to get rid of that see-throughy vibe about it all right I've just got burnt umber here just to map in the midground now now this midground is not going to be burnt umber but this is just the the base coat for it so I'll get it along that tape there just push it on don't go too high up 
Now, I'll show you the shape of this land, which is pretty much about that high here, coming about this high here. So we'll just map it in with this burnt umber, just to give it the, the depth it's gonna need. And coming lower as I come into the left-hand side of the painting there, down lower. Can we watch that tape come off again, Ian? Yeah, we'll pull that tape off now, just so as we can get that to the water. So. What I want to do now is come from the top and just gingerly fix that line up. It can be a bit wavy. It doesn't have to be like factory straight. Like that just looks a little bit neater with some finesse there. Now I've got some yellow green here, so I want to grab that with some white, just to get the pale ones in first. Because out here, there's some other trees, just like that. They are behind this grass, then we'll put this in front. So we're slowly coming from the back to the front of the painting. I'm just making up some trees here. See how easy this is. You can do it, you can do it. Coming along here, we've just got bits of darker in front of that moss. I mean that fog moss. So this is still building up the background. This fog that I put on there, I'm slowly pushing that backwards, leaving some of it there but just sort of dancing this around. And with a bit of luck, you will still see these bluey gray ones that we put there before, previously. Give them a bit more depth. Now you dry it if that's mudding up. If you see it pushing all the paint together and going like crap, dry your canvas. I've given it a dry, I'm grabbing the sap green over here and putting some cadmium yellow light just to get our darker value of lighter green in front of that, what we just put on there. Maybe something here. something maybe here. See, I've dried the canvas, so this would not go on too well if I didn't dry it. It'll be like trying to mud up on you. Something up here. These are background stuff as well. Little bits on the ground down there. So I'm gonna use just a flat brush and I've got some forest green here. I'll pinch a little bit of cadmium yellow just to turn the lights on a bit. That's that light stuff there. So I want it dark, dark, but I want it dark enough so I can highlight it with that yellow green. And I want to use this brush just to create my grass on top of this landmass. So I'll probably, I want to leave some of the bank there. So let's say about in the middle here, say about there, the brown bit. I want to leave some of that brown bit there. And then this is going to come up to the top there. You're pretty much covering up all that brown except leaving a bit where you want the bank to be. And that brown's gonna create depth within this forest green that we're putting on. So the brush is gonna create the top side a bit hairy like grass. If you can see, I'll just turn the light up a bit. And we're over here, we're gonna... See, this forest green's different to that sap green. Leave a little bit of brown there. Now I've got my script liner. I've mixed up the black and the burn umber just so as I can get some dark tree trunks up there. And these will probably be there. Nice and thin, nice and detailed. Uh, we'll get some more coming up here. 
want something just on his own sticking out of the grass there. Not too big. Have a look at your painting and work out the the perspective of it. So don't go too big. Cross those branches. It's important to keep that habit in your artwork to cross branches over just so they don't look weird. Now I'm grabbing some of this forest green and that red magenta and I want to mix up. Gonna make a dark purpley color, but that's what I want. Just so I can make these trees the way I want. So I want life on that one there. And it's gonna sit back what's behind it because they're all different values. And another one. Something down here. Now I'm grabbing the forest green and I'm mixing it with the cadmium yellow light just so we can highlight them. Leave enough of the darker colour you put on there previously. I'm just having, I'm just grabbing some of the um, forest green there, putting some low shrubs, I don't know, just to break up the bottom a bit just to get some indication of some ground shrubs under those trees as well. Okay, now we'll do the lawn, the grass. Now I'm grabbing my yellow green on my flat brush, just so we can sit all this now in front of what we just done there. And that dark green that we put on previously along here is going to act like the depth for all of this. This is just a simple, easy way. I feel I can get this kind of grass on there. Hairy at the top. And you can see how that forest green is acting like, not acting, but it's giving it depth. I've just wiped the brush and I'm putting the slightest bit of um, yellow ochre just under the grass where it's meeting this brown bit. Just a slight, you don't even have to do this, but I've just saw it in my monitor and I want to do it. So I've got the actual paint on there. I'm going to wipe it off the brush and kind of smear it into that brown if I can. And I might have to put more brown back if I've put too much yellow ochre in there. I've just laced up the brush with a bit of brown. There we go, so we've got like a caramel color there. Now that's added depth and all sorts there. Now we'll highlight that yellow green that we just put on there. Getting some of it and tainting it with the white till it's the lemony value that we're looking for. 
we want the tops of that grass just getting hit with light. I've dried the canvas. You must dry the canvas otherwise you won't get this to happen. Just pretty much along the top. Barely touching it there. Now I've added a lot more white to the brush just to, because it's not quite glary enough, there we go. Just here and there. Not white white, but you want it tainted, but you just want it a bit brighter than what was on there. Now this first grey colour we mixed with our blue, we need some of that just to put a glare in front of that before we put the reeds in. And you can use your bullshit stick for this. So we're making that silvery grey colour but with a lot more white and we want to get a glare underneath. I'll come down a bit so I can run the brush right under that land mass. Just about that fat. Come all the way along and let it disappear somewhere here very thinly but you want to make sure under here it's noticeable because we're going to sink it back with our reeds and reflections that's all you need there it's important to have that over here I might just freehand it get off the painting a bit and just do something like that just so it looks foggy and misty, it's not a hard line there. Oh, don't go too heavy Ian. Now these trees, we're just simply going to reflect those into the water using the darker value of everything there. We'll grab our forest green and that red. I'm just using the filbert, I mean the um, deer foot here. Now don't go on that bit that white line you just put there. I want to I want to try and get just kind of make up your reflections. They can be distorted. This one's going to come down to about there and then I'll start getting the thickness of it to about there. There, building it up where I feel it's got to be. This one. Use what brush you feel might work for you. Now I hope I can get enough room between me and the camera here. I'm grabbing a flat brush, I've just done a little bit here, and I want to scallop the green into the water like this. This is going to create the ripple waving look on top of the water when you add these, get them level though, when you add these to your reflections. Look at the reflections that look like this so you get an idea just where your brush strokes need to go. It helps analysing work that you plan to paint and get an idea of just how it should look. I've done this in quite a few videos. Now if you like what you see here, give me a comment and tell me where you're from. Say hello. Just practice this procedure because once you work out how to do it. It just adds elements of wonderful bullshit to your paintings. I'll move my hand out the way just so we could see hopefully it looks like rippling. Yes, it looks like um, the reflections there. They've got to linger out from it as well, not right in 
to the edge, just kind of work out like there could be a band coming across there just like that. Get them level. If your brush is starting to distort them, change your brush. Now grabbing the watercolour, and we need to bring water bands now within this. Just kind of get them straight. Train your brush. Making the water look glossy and wet was what I mean. Now the camera might not be picking these lines up, but they're there in real life anyway, so, and they look great. Okay, now grabbing cadmium yellow medium and your forest green, get this with a flat brush and just mix it marbly like that. Not too yellow though, we want it, yeah, it doesn't have to be pure mixed. straight line where are we hopefully you can see that and they're going to gradually when you first start off it's a bit iffity affity but once you get going you you pick up the momentum reeds see that white band of paint we put there we want to be just in front of that and we're going to make lots of little lines like this But as we come to the right hand side of the canvas, they're going to gradually get a bit wider in the band. Now that's getting a bit pale. I just added a little bit of the red to it. I don't want it to, if anything, these shadows that I put in the water of those trees could have been a bit lighter. So this dark stuff that I'm putting on would stand out in front of them, but I'm going to highlight some of this anyway. Like that. All right, let's grab that on our brush. Just grab the cadmium yellow light now with a lot of water in your brush. And we'll get that highlighted enough. Not too loud and bright, but just enough to show the darker values that we just put on there. Giving it a dry and we want to see this now. Don't feel you have to rush it. You can be very easily pulled into thinking, oh, I've got to hurry up. Just take your time and enjoy the journey because believe it or not, I feel when you're painting a painting the most satisfying part is the journey of creating it not looking at it at the end mind you looking at it at the end is good but enjoying the journey of creating it Now I've got some glaze here. This colour that I made, that white glare underneath the landmass, I'm putting a little bit of that with the glaze. The glaze will dry clear and then make this translucent or transparent so you can see through it. Because these bits of the tree reflection, I feel they're too heavy. So I'm gonna just use this to simply glide over their reflections like that just to dull them down, they're too loud I feel. I'll just autograph this and then we'll pull the masking tape off and I want to thank everybody who supports my channel on YouTube here, much appreciated. 
hit the join tab if you want to become a member of my YouTube channel and also I encourage people to become a patron and support my content help keep me in front of the camera longer All right let's pull the tape off and have a look at this There we go, that's not too shabby. We've got a swampy, water, grass, reedy landscape scene there. It's quite simple to do when you know what procedures to go about. Change it up a bit, but there's my layout, and I know you can do it. Well, that was not bad for a small uh, panoramic painting there. I hope you liked that, and if you did, you tell your friends, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. Also, check out this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.